Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hello learners. Welcome to our today's lesson. Remember the program is still Manifested Online Classes. The topic is chemical families and patterns in properties. And the subtopic for this lesson is chemical properties of alkali methods. But just before we get into this lesson, in the previous lesson, we were discussing the physical properties of alkali metals. And these physical properties were ease of cutting, appearance, melting and boiling point, electrical conductivity, and ionization energy. Therefore, I'll ensure that you've understood the physical properties and the trends in those physical properties because they are so important that you understand them because we are going to use them later in this topic. So it is important that you understand them very well. Therefore, in this lesson, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to write chemical equations for what happens when alkali metals are exposed to air. When you look at the chemical properties of alkali metals, there are reactions of alkali metals with oxygen, with water, and with chlorine. And therefore, in this lesson, we will start with the reaction of alkali metals with oxygen. So how do alkali metals react with oxygen? But just before that, when you cut a small piece of sodium metal, you expose it in air, then you expect that this piece of sodium is going to react with atmospheric water. When it reacts with atmospheric water, it leads to formation of sodium hydroxide and some hydrogen gas is produced. Therefore, when sodium Sodium metal reacts with water. That is now the atmospheric water or just moisture, which is a liquid. It leads to formation of sodium hydroxide the solution and hydrogen gas is produced. Again, remember in the previous topic, we said that a, a correct chemical equation is supposed to be balanced. The chemical symbols are supposed to be right, and again, physical states should be included. Therefore, our equation is not balanced, and maybe to remind you, then you need to balance the number of atoms on both the reactants and the product side. Like now on this side, we have one sodium atom. On this side, we have one sodium atom. Therefore, the sodium atoms are balanced. Go to the next element, which is hydrogen, and we have two atoms of hydrogen on the reactant side. On this side, we have one and these two, making them three. Therefore, hydrogen atoms are not balanced. The next is oxygen. We have one oxygen atom on the reactant side, and on the product side, again, it is still one. Let's say you want to balance the hydrogen atoms because they are the ones which are not balanced, then you balance the hydrogen atoms by placing a two just before water. Therefore, the hydrogen atoms here will be four, and the hydrogen atoms here will be three because of one and these two. Those are the rest. So to balance them on the product side again, we need a two here. When you place the two, the hydrogen atoms here are four, and the hydrogen atoms here are two, like these two, making them, making them four. Therefore, the hydrogen atoms are balanced. But by placing two here, or before sodium hydroxide, then you have, you have increased the number of sodium atoms. So if you increase them on the product side, you also need to increase them on the reaction side, and that's when you put a two 
at this position. Therefore, the equation of sodium reacting with water, leading to formation of sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas, is now balanced. So this is what happens when sodium is exposed in air. This sodium hydroxide formed reacts with carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And when it reacts with carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, it leads to formation of sodium carbonate. Therefore, we can say the sodium hydroxide formed reacts with carbon dioxide from air or in the air leading to formation of sodium carbonate. Therefore, the equation should be like this. So sodium hydroxide is a solution reacting with carbon dioxide leads to formation of sodium carbonate. And there is one molecule of water. Therefore, we balance the equation like that. This is sodium carbonate, and this sodium carbonate is having one molecule of water of crystallization. It's just water of crystallization. Therefore, the equation is balanced like this. If this is what you're calling sodium carbonate. Sodium carbonate. That is just a brief of what happens when sodium is exposed in air. But again, you need to understand that out of the three metals we have discussed, that is lithium, sodium, and potassium, that potassium is the most reactive and lithium is the least reactive. Potassium is the most reactive. while lithium the least reactive. And this is because that losing one electron from the outermost energy level of potassium is more easier, or it's easier than losing one electron from the outermost energy level of lithium. And that's why potassium is more reactive than lithium. So lithium is the least reactive, and potassium is the most reactive. Now, looking at how these, these elements react with oxygen. That first, sodium, when sodium reacts with oxygen, when sodium is burnt, that sodium burns with a yellow flame. Leading formation of a white solid leading to formation of a white solid therefore the white solid is sodium oxide therefore this is sodium reacting with oxygen, it's burning with a yellow flame, leading to formation of sodium oxide. We will write a chemical equation, then a chemical equation will be like this. This is sodium, which is a solid, it reacts with oxygen gas, the leading to formation of sodium oxide. And again, the formulas you need to understand the valences. In the previous topic, we discussed the valences of elements. That sodium, because sodium is in group one, 
the valency is 1 and oxygen is in group 6. The valency is 2 because it gains 2 electrons to form an ion. And therefore, the formula of sodium oxide will be like that. And this sodium oxide is a solid. And therefore, again, you need to balance the equation. Look at the number of atoms on this side. We have one atom. Then here, there are two. Here we have two oxygen atoms. Here, it is only one. And therefore, we start by balancing the number of oxygen atoms. We just need to put a two just before sodium oxide. And therefore, oxygen atoms will be two because of two times one. Those are two. And on this side again, they are also two. So the oxygen atoms are balanced. Then by placing that two, you've now raised the number of sodium atoms to four. Two times two, that is four. Then you need now to ensure they are balanced by placing a four just before sodium. So that is how sodium reacts with oxygen. It burns with a yellow flame leading to formation of a white solid and the white solid is oxygen. When sodium reacts in excess oxygen, it leads to formation of sodium peroxide. leads to formation of sodium peroxide. Therefore, the equation will be like this. Sodium, which is a solid, reacts with oxygen, leading to formation of sodium peroxide. Therefore, the equation you need to balance by having a two just there. Therefore, this oxygen is in excess. This is limited. So in the limited supply of oxygen, sodium burns to produce sodium oxide. And in excess supply of oxygen, sodium burns to form sodium peroxide. The next element is potassium. That potassium burns well, is potassium with a purple flame. It's called purple or lilac flame. Leading to formation white solid. The white solid is also uh, potassium potassium oxide. Therefore the equation will be potassium which is a solid reacting with oxygen. Again the flame is purple leading to formation of potassium oxide which is a solid. Therefore again you need to balance it by placing a 4 and a 2, like that. So that is how the, these elements react with oxygen. That is how these elements react with oxygen. So again, it is important you know how to write correct chemical equations. Correct chemical equations, because that is something we learned in the previous topic structure of the atom and the periodic table. So before we end this lesson, I would like us to review a little bit what we have just learned. We are learning the chemical properties of alkali metals and we are discussing the reaction of alkali metals with oxygen. We have said that when sodium, a piece of sodium metal is exposed, remember again you are supposed to work with small pieces, very small pieces because these metals are very 
reactive. So when you expose sodium, that this sodium reacts with moisture from the atmosphere, leading to formation of sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. Then we have balanced the equation. Then the sodium hydroxide formed, the sodium hydroxide formed reacts. So this sodium hydroxide is reacting with atmospheric carbon dioxide or carbon dioxide in the air and it's leading to formation of sodium sodium carbonate so this is the chemical equation to show that the sodium hydroxide which is a solution reacts with carbon dioxide which is a gas then leading to formation of sodium carbonate which is a solid and i've told you again this sodium carbonate then this sodium carbonate is having some water of crystallization which is just one molecule. Then again, we've said that potassium is the most reactive, while lithium is the least reactive. This is because it is easier to lose an electron from the outermost energy level of potassium than lithium, again, because of the strength of forces we discussed. That the strength of forces which are holding this atom or this lithium atom together, they are stronger than those ones in potassium. And that's why losing an electron in potassium will be easier than in lithium. Then again, we have now discussed what happens when these elements burn in oxygen. Sodium burns in oxygen with a yellow flame, leading to formation of a white solid. And the white solid is sodium oxide. And again, there is a balanced question for that. Then sodium reacts with excess oxygen. When sodium reacts with excess oxygen, there is now leads to formation of sodium peroxide. This, this is excess. This is limited. This is the formula of sodium peroxide. Then lastly, potassium burns with a, a purple or a lilac flame, leading to formation of white solid. And this white solid is potassium oxide. And we have written again the equation. Therefore, again, ensure that the equations are balanced. The chemical symbols are written very well. And also, the physical states are included. So where you are required to write a solid, then ensure that you write them very well. Where you are required to write a gas, then a liquid, and so on, to ensure that they are written very well. So that brings us to the end of our lesson today. But just before we end, I want to leave you with this assignment. Write balanced chemical equations. Write balanced chemical equations for the reaction between oxygen and potassium and sodium. This just means that you write a, chemical, a balanced chemical equation between sodium and oxygen and also a reaction between potassium and oxygen how both of them react with oxygen that brings us to the end of this lesson in the next lesson we are going to discuss the chemical property on how alkali metals reacts with water see you in the next lesson